G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here today, and we're going to be looking at this bad boy. Now, what is this? I uh, actually got contacted from Gearbest, and they sent me out a frame, and when I first heard about it, I was like, hmm, okay. Uh, so this is the Dubai 210 Racer, but when I went and checked out what they actually were selling this bad boy with, uh, it comes with some fantastic motors and some pretty good ESCs and a fantastic flight controller as well. So I thought, well, that's a pretty awesome little racing package. Uh, anyway, we're going to look at what it comes with and we'll talk about all the components and why I think it's actually a pretty serious racer. Anyway, let's get started. All right, so here's everything we get in the kit and uh, we'll break it down a little bit and we'll talk about each one of these in detail. But just as a quick overview before we get started, we've got our frame. It comes with uh, some ESCs, a PDB, uh, and I guess here's the real stars of the show. So you've got a full deluxe SP F3 flight controller and uh, these bad boys right here. So these are the Emacs uh, red bottoms as well, the 2300 KV. So you get four of those, four ESCs, and uh, then you also get two sets of props. All right. Uh, let's jump in and have a look at the frame all right so uh here it is is the frame and what does this remind you of if you've been doing your homework or you know uh you haven't been living under a rock you will notice that this looks identical to a qav i'm going to put two pictures side by side i actually can't even tell the difference when i'm looking at them uh so i've never actually seen a qav in the flesh though so uh i'm only going on what i've what i've heard other people say but to me this looks like it's just been cloned straight off the qav anyway so i'm not too sure how i feel about that but uh, at least there's some other good things in the kit. So let's take this frame apart and have a look at that first. Alrighty, so here's the frame all broken down. So we've got our base plate, top plate, and then uh, some various ways to hold our FPV camera. So uh, we're going to talk about the base plate uh, in a moment, but I just want to quickly say that I really like these standoffs that they come with. I think they're pretty good standoffs. I actually like the color because I'm sick of using red, but uh, the screws they come with are way too short. So you're going to shear these off. You have almost no strength as it's screwing into the standoff. It really doesn't have any bite whatsoever. So to, if a uh, little tip, I don't know how much the guys are going to listen, but definitely we just include some longer screws. Maybe another two or three mils would make this a lot tougher frame. Anyway, let's move on from talking about the hardware and uh, look at the base plate. All right, so here's the base plate and it is 210 millimeters from motor to motor. Uh, and one thing I do like about this is it can take 1306, 1806 or your 22 size motor. So whatever size motor you're going to put in here, you should have no troubles. But this kit is designed to run the 22 size, so that's going to fit nicely on there. Now something I find very interesting about this frame, it seems to have a bit of flex in it. So uh, I don't know how well you can see this here, but to me that feels like it's not as stiff as some of the other ones. I don't think I've ever had one that quite, you can sort of see it even just there. Uh, so let's have a look at how thick it is. So it's coming in at three millimeters. So uh, it's not it's not the thickest, but it's also not the thinnest, but I still find it has a little bit of flex. I think a four millimeter frame would be a much better option, especially considering just how much carbon you've got in some of these points here. I think it's gonna uh, have a, quite a lot of stress put on it, especially around here. Now, of course, you've got these tiny little holes in here, and I guess they're there for like some little landing gears or some little uh, posts or something like that, but to be honest, let's be honest, nobody ever uses those. So uh, I wish they just left that straight across. The arms are relatively thick, so you're gonna be able to fit an ESC very comfortably on here. You've got your eight standoff holes, one, actually six standoff styles here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, in the middle, you've got your 36 by 36 holes, and that's for your standard flight controller. So that's gonna fit perfectly with our uh, F3 flight controller just here. And something that is a little bit cool, you actually have two different options for mounting your HD camera. So you can either use the sort of traditional way where people put their camera let me just track down a camera here we go where people put their camera in the middle and use the holes on the outside uh sort of to swivel it in or uh you, it also comes with this little uh piece here where you can use this to somehow mount it in but then it's going to be on a fixed angle now there's a fair few cutouts in here, so I think that's uh, that's kind of a good thing. I don't mind these ones just here. I really just wish there was a little bit more carbon across this part. I think it could be made a little bit thicker to give it a little bit more strength. <clears throat> but with that said, uh, it is a fairly light frame. So let's uh, have a look at the top plate. Right here, so here is the top plate, and I've got to say, this one actually does scam you with how thin that is. So I don't know if you can see just how much that is bending, but this thing feels fairly flimsy. So let's see what we're coming in at. 
uh, a 1.5 millimeter top plate. So I definitely think that that's gonna be breaking, especially when you consider <clears throat> it's only got these tiny little bits of carbon just here where it's connected to the standoffs. So connecting it to the rest of the frame. A ton of cutouts though, so it is super light and at least it does have some straps in here for your battery straps. And looking at the back, you've got a place for your XT, not XT, sorry, for your pigtail connector. And then you've also got this little part in here which you can uh, sort of strap some battery connectors or strap some other cords down to, which is great as well as some tiny little spaces for some zip ties. Uh, and at the front, you notice they do have a cutout. So if you wanna put a serious angle on your camera, it can poke up through the top of the uh, the top plate just there so you can have some pretty good speed. Alrighty, let's uh, put the thing together and see how she goes. Ta-da, all right, so I didn't put the rest of the screws in because we're about to take it apart anyway to do a little bit of building. But uh, I gotta say something that is really nice about these, it is a breeze to sort of stick these together because some of the other quads that I've been building are, are a bit of a nightmare to be honest. I'm looking at you, uh, Flynosaurus Hex. So building something like this is a lot easier just putting the frame together than something like that Hex that I reviewed a, uh, last month. Anyway, uh, let's move on and look at the other components that come in this kit. I didn't put all the standoffs in, but uh, yeah, I'm sure you can imagine how that goes. Let's have a look at the PDB and the flight control. Alrighty, so uh, this is one of the stars of the show, I think, in this kit. So we have the SP uh, Deluxe Flight Controller right here. So and this has sort of become, I don't know why they've gone with the full version. I think just a sort of standard version would be uh, a bit more useful or maybe reduce the price a little bit because I don't need the barometer or anything like that. I know in a racing quadcopter, I pretty much just want to fly acro or self-leveling and that's about the only information that I need. But I guess these are sort of becoming the current sort of standard of what people are using. So just like we used to use Nays 30, twos for a long time uh, a lot of people nowadays it is the f3 the sp f3 flight controller is sort of the norm that people are using so a fantastic very good reliable flight controller so i have no qualms recommending this one at all the cables that it comes with uh they could probably be a little bit better they don't feel like very nice silicon wire at all they just feel like sort of your standard signal wires and i don't think they're very good so i definitely wish they came with some nicer wires because so they don't feel very soft and malleable it's a big word, malleable. Uh, it does come with this little plastic case that you can put around to protect your flight controller if you want to put it on, but I just think that's unnecessary weight. So we're not gonna be using that. Uh, now this thing can do all the usual things, like you can hook up your VBAT, your buzzer, you've got a whole bunch of your um, UART ports on here so you can connect a whole bunch of stuff. So a really, really powerful flight controller. Now let's have a look at the PDB that comes with it. And something that I am really impressed with, I wasn't expecting it, I opened it up and check this out. It came with a full set of colored instructions just for the PDB. So I don't know why, why do they don't send something? This is absolutely awesome. There is so much information on here. I'll try and keep it still for anybody who wants to pause it and have a look at what's on here. But this just is a fantastic little PDB. Uh, and especially by putting this in, it makes it so much easier. So something as complex as this flight controller, I wish they would just put it in uh, one small piece of A5 paper like that uh, to do it. So, all right, so let's look at this PDB. So of course you've got space for all your ESC, and your battery leads around the outside. You've got spaces for your camera and your VTX and if you want to run some OSDs. And then probably the most important part, uh, you can see just here, it's got a five volt out as well as a 12 volt. Something I do think is a little bit sketchy though around the outside I can see just here. So these parts uh, have a bit of copper around them and that makes me wonder if they are live or if you were gonna put these on a frame that uses a metal screw, that could be a bit of a problem. So I'm definitely gonna be using some plastic or nylon screws just here because I don't wanna have any shorts. But overall, I think that's a fantastic little PDB and it should come in uh, very handy. I wonder how heavy that is actually. See how much copper it says. It's got two ounces of copper in there. So that PDB is coming in at, and a, a heavy PDB is not a bad thing. It just means it's got a lot of copper in there. All right, so it's coming in at nine, nine or 10 grams. Alrighty, so that's those two. Uh, now let's look at the other superstar of the show and that would be the motors. Alright, so the motors we are using are the famous race series red bottoms, uh, the 2205s, and these ones are the 2300. These ones are the 2300 KV, which is great because personally I think that gives you more choice on what sort of prop combo you're going to run on. Now if I open one of these up, this is everything that comes inside, so you get it's packaged very, very nicely and uh, what I do like, these are actually really, really useful 
I use these often. I use this as my crash pack. So definitely keep these containers because they can hold all your tools and little bits and pieces when you're out in the field, as well as reuse some of this foam. Uh, and then you get a whole bunch of mounting options and like, I can't believe it comes with three lock nuts. They're pretty serious looking lock nuts. Uh, they must be expecting a lot of power out of these things. But, and then you've got all your mounting hardware. So let's have a look at the motor itself. Now these motors, well, they're called red bottoms for a reason, but a lot of people have been raving about them and I'm super stoked to try them as well. They can put out a kilo of thrust, so an absolute beast in terms of thrust. They've got some really strong magnets in there, so sort of some next generation, or I guess the newest generations of magnets. All right, and they've got a cooling feature on here just as well, which means you can pump the juice through these bad boys without worrying about it heating up too much. So uh, you can definitely give yourself a little bit of an extra push by using that. Now they do spin at 2300 kV and they can run 3 and 4S batteries on here. But I think if you went any higher on 5S or anything like that, you're probably going to cook them. Uh, and they're meant to have pretty good bearings in these ones as well. I think the bearings in these motors, so I've heard, are a bit better than the higher kV ones like the 2600. I've heard that these bearings are a bit better. All right, now each one of these motors, if I turn this on, is coming in at... Uh, about 30 grams. So that's going to be give or take because we're going to have some screws in there. We're also going to be cutting off some wires. So you're at least looking at 120 grams in the motors alone when we put four of these on the frame. All right, let's have a look at the ESCs. So here's the ESCs and they're called OC Day. I don't know how to actually pronounce this, but I'm just going to say the OC Day ESCs. They can run a 2 to 4S LiPo uh, and they're 20 amp versions. Now, I don't know what chipset these ones are using, but they look very similar to uh, the little bees. So I'm going to have to put them on to sort of report back to you and feel how smooth they feel. Uh, they are opto, so they're not going to power your flight controller, but that's pretty normal nowadays. But I think they're going to do quite nicely. I couldn't find too much information online about these actually, so I'm very interested to see how they go. Now these ESCs, they are 20 amp, uh, but they do have a 30 amp burst rating, which is great, especially when you're running these because uh, for five seconds, you can punch it up up to 30 amps and it should be totally fine. Uh, and it's worth noting they come with the BL Heli bootloader, so you can flash them with the BL Heli suite as well and update their firmware. Alrighty, let's uh, have a look at the props that these things spin. All right, so here are the props just here again. They're the OC Day, or however you say that, and they're 50 45 bullnose props, so five inch props. And I've got one just here, and I thought these looked very familiar. And to me, these look almost identical. See if you can tell the difference, but I can't. Uh, to the first generation of the Dow props, so the Dow bullnose just here. So this is the sort of V1 version what they used to come out with, uh, and they look almost identical right there. I would say they've copied it almost exactly. Even the plastic inside feels exactly the same. So I'll be very interested to see how these go. It is nice how they give you two sets. At least they've realised here that people are going to crash. Uh, but it'd be nice if the option was on there to maybe order another two or three pairs, or maybe they could just upgrade and put in some Dow V twos because I think the Dells, uh, as far as I'm concerned, are fantastic, especially for learners, but we'll have to see how well these hold up in some crashes. Alrighty, with all that said and done, I'm going to have to build the thing before I can sort of give it a proper review and give it a fly. You will need to include your own FPV camera, so you're going to have to get your own FPV gear, actually. You need to include all your FPV stuff. So if you are going to build an FPV racer, which is essentially what this thing is built for, you're still going to need a camera, VTX, and an antenna, as, and also you need to include a receiver as well. So none of that is included in this kit. Anyway, uh, let's put this thing together so we can have a look at what she looks like when she's built. All right, so let's cut to that in three, two, one, and boop. Alrighty, so here it is, and here is the finished build. And uh, I gotta say, I love the color scheme that this thing is rocking. It started off as an accident, I just used a bit of yellow heat shrink, but I think it looks fantastic. So uh, let's go over some of the positives that I liked and uh, what I thought about when I was building this. Now, it was a bit of a breath of fresh air to be building one of these quads because you still have a ton of room in here and also some room at the front of the quad behind these plates, uh, especially compared to some of the little tiny pods and things like that that I've been building. So it was really nice to be able to use uh, something that has a little bit more space and I was actually able things went together really really well and I was able to solder everything up uh, in under three hours on this build so this went really really well so that was that was fantastic so it was really fun to build, but let's talk about some of the other positives as well. So the motors are absolute weapons. These things are, a lot of people are raving about these things and they put out some fantastic numbers in terms of thrust and uh, they're fantastic motors. Uh, the ESCs, we'll talk about those in a little bit as well. 
a fantastic flight controller in here and I found it fitted really nicely in this stack so I've got my VTX flight controller PDB and receiver down below uh, so I think it went together really well it fits nicely got a lot of room in here I really like this little sort of uh, pigtail and this little tiny zip tie here in the frame but speaking of the frame I'm not too sure how I feel about it I think it is a fantastic frame but it's a direct copy of like a QAV uh, 210 or one of the QAVs out there. So I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Uh, and then let's move on, I guess, to some of the negatives or some things I think we would like to change. So of course, number one, I would love to see an original design in a frame rather than just a straight up clone because uh, I just think that's better for the hobby and better for everybody involved. The ESCs, I actually had some issues with these ESCs. Now, I thought that'd be relatively new, but what I found out when I was flashing and they had BL Heli, I think I'll show you a screenshot here, but I think it was like 13.1 or something. That's even if they had BL Heli on there. And they're meant to be 20 amped. And when I hooked them up to the BL Heli suite, they actually came across as an Afro 12 amp ESC. So I have no idea what's going on there. I updated the firmware in them anyway and they seem to be causing no issues, but that's just something to be aware of when you're building this. And I actually needed to update this firmware in order for it to work with my flight controller. And then speaking of the flight controller, I actually had some issues trying to flash beta flight onto this one. Uh, I had to short the boot pins a few times and I don't know what was going on. I had to take it apart and then all of a sudden it just decided to work. So uh, that was one of the little issues I had with the flight controller. Most of the problems seem to be in the software side of things. So that's where I did have some issues. One thing I would like to see in a bit of a change, I don't know why Emacs does this, but why make counterclockwise and clockwise motors? It's just confusing and annoying and we don't really need to have that. Personally, I have never, since we've been using these lock nuts, I have never been flying around where one of these has come undone and a prop's come flying off. And if it does happen, I would much prefer that to happen once a year or whatever, because I've been flying for a bit over a year, than have to figure out, trying to find which, which thread to use, if it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, just give us all the same thread motors, please, because I find it kind of frustrating to have to use different screws especially look at this so this is a what's this one's going counterclockwise and this one's going clockwise but both of those are silver and then on the back here you've got some same colored ones as well so I thought at least silver would mean clockwise or counterclockwise but it's not the case so I don't know what is going on with the color of the bolt maybe they just give you a few options but these are the ones I found work for me. Now also this kit, I had to source my own receiver and my own FPV gear. I think it'd be great if they sort of offered an option. I can understand uh, not putting a receiver in there, but it'd be great if there was an FPV kit as well. And maybe there is that out there, but I really think if you're gonna get everything like this in a kit and you're trying to get it all from one place, at least maybe try and put everything in there. So include the HS1177, uh, include an antenna, a pigtail, and also a VTX that you know is gonna fit. I think that would be a big improvement. And then again, to sort of jump back on the frame, I still am a little bit concerned about the amount of flex that this frame actually has because it's gonna be putting out a ton of thrust and it's gonna be going very, very fast. So I'm gonna, I'm a little bit hesitant about this thing is going to hold up in crashes. And I'd be really interested to see just how it holds up against, I guess, an original QAV. So I'd be really interested to see the differences in the frames if I had them in front of me. But overall, even though it sounded like I had a lot of negative things to say, a lot of those are small things like being a clone frame or uh, just some of these little bolts on the top. Overall, I think it is gonna be an absolute weapon when you're flying it around and it looks fantastic as well. The total weight of this build is coming in at about, I'm gonna guess a bit over 300. Oh. 310 grams right there, but that's also with it. How much would it be with an antenna? All right, so it's coming in at about 320 grams. So uh, that's pretty decent actually for a five inch quad with some very, very good motors. So there it is, there's my review of the Dubai 210 Racer from GearBest and there's some great things I really love about this frame but there's also some other things like the direct cloning uh, that I don't feel too comfortable about. In terms of performance, I think it's fantastic. You've got some killer motors, uh, some strange ESCs that I've never used before but they seem to hold up quite all right once I've flashed them with the latest firmware uh, and a really, really good flight controller in there as well. So if you're looking for sort of a kit uh, and you wanna know what works together and you're not sure where to get some things, you definitely can't go wrong with one of these. Now uh, you are going to get great performance with what's in here and especially because the frame is modeled so heavily cloned on like the 210, uh, the 210 QAV, I think uh, it is going to have fantastic flight performance. I just wish that maybe they had a bit more of an original design rather than just modeling it directly on the QAV. Anyway, uh, I'm going to leave you with some flight footage so you can sort of be the judge of yourself and judge, judge, so you can judge for yourself of how this thing's going. Uh, subscribe for more FPV related content and as always, happy flying! 
Oh, and just before I go, check out the color scheme I'm rocking here. I'm really impressed with that. I think it came out really, really well. Uh, I might even paint around here, call it the bumblebee or something, something like that. Anyway, let's get on with the fly footage. Happy flying!